I hear someone finally coming down the stairs. I just know it's my bestie. So I turn around and look up and guess who I see. Bozo number two that happened to be with my bestie all day and all night. I am so furious because now I feel like they are playing a game on me. Bozo number one finally wakes up and comes back into the house cursing me out. Everyone is holding him back. I calmly ask the boy that was with my bestie where she is, and he tells me she is upstairs resting. I ask kindly, can you please take me to her? He says, yes, but first I need you to sit down and let me explain all of what is going on here. I say, oh, please do. He proceeds to tell me the most bogus story I ever heard. He said that when we were all at the mall together, we all decided to eat gummies that his friend brought along. He then said, while me and his friend were sitting down talking, he took my friend over to Scoops to get her some ice cream. All he remembers is his friend coming to him panicking, saying that I was over by the cell phone case stand tweaking out of my mind. So they all rushed over to come and get me. He said when they arrived, I was already gone. Supposedly they were looking all up and down the mall trying to find me. They even spoke to two officers trying to get them involved in a search for me. I rudely interrupted him saying you are so full of it. You took my bestie from me and had me looking all over town for her. You text me from a random call and text free number playing games with my head. Also, I'm the one who had got the police involved, not you. You two are criminals for all I know. Now I'm going to ask you one more time to take me to my bestie. If you don't, I'm going upstairs on my own and getting her the hell out of here. Everyone was standing around silent, so I started to run up the steps. As I am running up the stairs, my ex-boyfriend Brian runs after and tries to stop me. I kicked him so hard that he flew all the way to the bottom step, breaking his neck. I was too upset to feel sorry or even care if he was alive. When I finally got upstairs, it was a long hallway with about eight bedrooms. I started banging on each room door, and if no one opened, I would kick the door in. I made it to the first three rooms, kicking in each door. They were all completely empty. But when I got to the fourth room and kicked it open, I started to see a few students from the party last night. Now I'm raging, kicking in room door after room door until I finally get to the last room. I kicked the door open, and you won't believe who I saw. Once again, the queen of the nasties, Rebecca. This time she was having sex with the love of my life, Jaden. That's when I totally blacked out. Suddenly I woke up and everyone who was at the party was now standing over me. They all were in some sort of shock. As I looked around, I started to feel heaving wetness all over me. When I looked down at my clothes, I was completely covered in blood. I asked everyone what happened. That's when my bestie slowly walked through the crowd crying so hard like I never saw her cry before. She said, you killed them. I said, killed who? She said, Rebecca and Jaden, I started crying, saying, how did I kill them? That's impossible. She said, you strangled Rebecca to death with your bare hands. Then you pulled a knife from your purse and stabbed Jaden 37 times, Oimes. And that's all I remember. Okay, we got the whole confession on tape. I'm sorry to say, Ms. Adams, but you are being charged for the murders of Brian Richards, Rebecca Hensley, and Jaden Maldonado.